this is 23 minutes long. I was figuring it might ultimately be a couple of hours of um, dealing with the same parameters of landscape, and uh, but getting into other different places, um, different tone. This one uh, would probably be the darkest part of the whole piece, I guess, if it had ever been finished. Um, the whole editing strategy uh, revolves around something that you're familiar with if you've handled 35 millimeter film in, in that it has four sprocket holes per frame. So, and this is sort of the projectionist nightmare that you uh, are, are a perf out of sync or two perfs out of sync so you, you see a divided picture, uh, which is, you know, a mis a, always a mistake. Um, but I began to sort of enjoy that as, as, as an editing strategy because uh, it, it gives you a situation where you see a familiar scene in a different relationship to uh, other things that are on the screen. Uh, it's done, on these films I've done it by uh, essentially improvising on the instrument that's doing the recording um, and, and finding patterns for shifting the picture up and down and of course when you do that with several pictures and put them together then you get other complex un unpredicted relationships um, but then it sort of everything sort of changed I mean this this was basically finished in the 90s um, and what I've been doing ever since is trying to figure out you know how to relate to doing similar things digitally um, which I think is an encouraging medium, but it, it's uh, it's frustrating to uh, uh, to learn. It's hard for uh, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. I guess is the <laughs> relative aphorism. If I can take a question, I'd be happy to. There's a lot more movement in this than just the frame going in and out. Uh, there's I mean, it's, that's where people might sense they might get a seizure or something. Bah. The things are like <laughs> moving down you know, continually. It's very dynamic. Uh, it's shot uh, using a motion controlled camera so that you can do uh, very slow, constant pans. And then, and then uh, complicating that by putting them over one another. Uh, it, it actually, some of those shots were test shots that, that we made when we were uh, developing a motion control rig that I used to shoot uh, water and power in, in the 80s. Um, <clears throat> and I was, I was in the process of making, making uh, uh, the decay of fiction and I just needed to sort of get my mind off of that for a while and, and just operate hands on with bits of film that I had and those are things that, that I picked up. So it's uh, it's kind of an LA picture. Um, yeah. Some some parts of LA that aren't there anymore. I think I'm gonna make up a story about how I was born in that little house. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't think of any other excuse for it. <laughs> And do you want to talk about the sound in relation to the picture? Yeah, the sound um, is all made from a library of, of sources uh, that my collaborator George Lockwood recorded um, and some other things that are added. Um, they're edited, um, I mean, as anyone who knows who's worked on a digital editing system, it, it, it almost cries out for recursive schemes that repeats things so readily that uh, you, you, you almost have to restrain yourself from doing it. But, um, I, I sort of like the kind of polyrhythms of spoken word, spoken word and, 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 and random uh, environmental sound. Um, I kind of like the fact that they, they begin to make rhythms sometimes and uh, um, <coughs> syncopation and there's a sort of Old musical vocabulary that that comes <coughs> into play just with editing uh, virtually anything. Um, so so I, I made this track uh, over the course of the summer or so, 
um, I think it's uh, a little low in volume. I think it might benefit from being a little louder. And also, I apologize for the condition of the last print. I didn't realize it had been so badly scratched, but uh, maybe that's just part of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No hope of, of seeing the longer version of this, do you think? Well, I never, I never shot the rest of it. Yeah. I mean, that was, it, was, it was basically to be um, a new batch of shooting and then uh, a new composite. Right. And the shooting never happened. I, I, tried to find funding for it and couldn't. The curious thing is that I, I always worked in the industry, so I had a source of income that, um, that paid for my own filmmaking. And since I'm no longer doing that, since the industry is a whole different phenomenon now than it was at that time, um, I've, had to, I've had to cut back. Uh, I've been working, um, just doing really simple things with uh, digital video. Uh, didn't have any that were at a point that I thought were worth showing yet. But, um, there is a piece that uh, will be attached to the end of the show on Tuesday uh, that's basically a video of the Ambassador Hotel being destroyed. That's the only thing that I've actually finished. Yeah, Julie. Um, you mentioned that earlier to me that you were um, making digital copies of some of your films, and people have always asked me how they get your material. So, could you let us know about where you're at? And yes, I've <coughs> I've been um, collaborating with a with a friend who works at a digital house, and we're making uh, masters and eventually DVDs. It's been taking forever, but. Um, I hope to get all the three 35 millimeter films on DVDs by the end of last year, I said, <laughs> soon. Um, I've also been working uh, on a sort of inexpensive apparatus for digitizing 60 millimeter or 35. Um, we don't have it to the point where it works fast enough to be feasible, but uh, we can make a, a very high resolution copy of, of any film and store it and then down res it to make uh, DVDs or in some cases I'm doing uh, projection of pieces that uh, we have so sized the pixel ratio to the projector and, uh, and the quality of the image uh, seems to be paying off. It seems quite nice. Mm 